Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about my top five habitat improvements you should be thinking about for this season. Now these aren't in any particular order and you're not the only five things you should be doing, but these are the top five that I want to talk about right now. So number one, I'm talking about water, adding water, adding watering holes. Now deer get a lot of their water from their brows. And it depends on what time of year it is. In the fall, there's less browse, so they need more water, more watering holes, creeks. It's said that on average, deer should take in about two to three quarts of water per day. Now, that also varies on the time of year. If it's during the rut, bucks are running all day, they're gonna require more water. So you need to look at your property and see if there's water nearby, if it's on your property, the neighboring property. If there's not, think about adding a watering hole. You can use a large livestock tank that you can refill if you have access to it. Um, but if you use a large enough tank, it should stay full all year just from the rainfall. You can also buy a small pond liner, but deer need water and water is going to keep them on your property, especially during the rut. You're going to keep those mature bucks as they're running, as they're looking for does. If you have the water, it's going to give them one more reason to come to your property during hunting season. So, number two, I have allow travel. And what I mean by that is clearing travel corridors. Specifically, fallen dead timber. If you have enough dead timber in an area, it could clog the whole thing up and completely change the way that those deer are moving through your property. I've had an area that was getting exceptional deer movement, but there was fallen timber, clogged it up, the deer completely changed, avoided probably three acres of the property just because of that one travel corridor was now clogged up. So identify the travel routes, go in there, look for fallen timber. You should be doing that every year, just kind of walking the property looking for anything that's changed, anything that's going to change that movement for the deer. So either you can go in there and clear it out, or you can adjust your hunting strategies based on what that new movement's going to be. But you need to see what those travel corridors are, clear those travel corridors if you have new fallen timber, something that's going to change the deer's natural movement. So I had, just a few weeks ago I went in, I pulled out a bunch of dead timber from that area, use the chainsaw, cut through a bunch of logs, and the deer are already back to using that area. So if there's an area that they're already using and you've noticed that the deer have stopped using an area all of a sudden, something's changed. And there's a good chance that it could be the travel quarters that they were using to get there are now blocked. So they're forced to go around that area or forced to use a different way to get out to the ag fields. So number three goes a lot with number one. Browse, natural browse, adding browse. If you've taken down some trees, allowed some sign to come down and increase the amount of natural browse and regeneration that's coming up, the deer are gonna have a lot more food and a lot more water. They say about 70 to 80% of the deer's diet is coming from natural browse. Now you're gonna notice I don't have food plots on here. And that's because food plots, especially in the spring, are not gonna have a significant impact on the deer's diet. You can add a food plot in the spring, but you're not gonna be able to compete with the spring green up, what the deer are already having, what nature's already providing from the browse. So if you focus more on natural browse, increasing the sunlight that's coming down to the floor so you can get the regeneration, that's a renewing source of food for those deer. It's gonna come back every year, it's gonna establish itself. Unlike a food plot, you have to replant. So the browse, is more natural it's a better alternative to adding food plots especially in the spring now in the fall a lot of that natural browse is dying leaves are falling off so that's when you're going to benefit more from food plots is in the fall but as far as a permanent habitat improvement looking to increase the native species and the natural browse to allow those deer to have a renewable source of food is going to be 
an important part of your improvement. Food plots, unless you maintain them, are more temporary. And like I said, they're not going to make a big impact in the spring when nature's already giving them large amounts of browse. So in the fall, food plots are going to play more of a role. But as far as the rest of the year, and a more permanent improvement for your deer habitat, increase the natural browse. Number four, I have bedding. So depending on how your property is, if it's wide open, a lot of open timber, you're going to want to maybe do some hinge cuts, give them some side cover, plant some switchgrass, maybe some pockets of conifers, something to provide the deer bedding if they don't have it naturally on your property. But you'll be able to tell if you walk through your property, you see some thicker areas, you can see where the deer are bedding. If you don't have that, if you just have a property that is all mature hardwoods, then you may need to go in and create some bedding. So you can create it by creating side cover with the hinge cuts, which is gonna allow sunlight to hit that forest floor. It's gonna allow it to really thicken up. It's gonna provide some natural browse as well. Deer are gonna wanna bed near that food and near that water. So you wanna use all these improvements and have them relate to one another. So have that food layered out to bedding and water. Now, the last one I hear is screening. Now you wanna screen bedding areas, you wanna screen food plots, you wanna screen the deer from human intrusion, from roadways. So for screening, for a more permanent solution, you can plant some switchgrass. Now, switchgrass is gonna grow five to seven feet tall. It'll take about two or three years for it to really mature and get to that full growth. In that first year, it's gonna grow, but it's not gonna give you those max heights. Egyptian wheat is gonna give you seven to 10 feet tall in the first year, but Egyptian wheat is not a permanent solution. You need to come back in every year and plant that if you want to continue to use that as a screening. Now, if you're planting switchgrass and you want to plant a row of Egyptian wheat next to that to allow it time to mature, that may be a good idea for the first year. But other screening includes pines. Um, those are also going to take a little while to mature and give you that screening. But if you're planting pines, you want to make sure that you're spacing those pines tighter together and stagger the rows. That's going to give you more of a wall effect and more screening. So overall, these are just five things I think that you should focus on when you're trying to improve your deer habitat. You may not have all these on your property. You may already have all these on your property. And depending on the size of your property, you may not be able to make every improvement, especially on a small parcel. You don't want to over improve a parcel. Doing too much, making too many changes could actually hurt your hunting more than helping. So focus on what your deer need, focus on what the area is already offering, and see which of these is going to help your hunting the most. Thanks for making it to the video guys. As always, make sure to contact us for the habitat solutions on your whitetail property. Also, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment on this video.